Good morning, everybody. Apologies that this is a pre-recorded session. Uh, we had some technical technical problems with GoToWebinar this morning. Uh, my name is Adam Thornton. I'm commercial director of CloudBridge. I'm pleased to be able to present uh, this breakfast briefing, uh, talking about taking control of your commercials in the cloud. It's been a busy week with sessions looking at how to approach your uh, infrastructure plans with AWS security uh, and transacted a great customer case study session yesterday. But now I'm going to talk you through really how do you get control? Uh, what does visibility look like? And what are the initiatives that, that you can take to really start getting a better control over your costs in the short, medium uh, and longer term? So uh, before we go into it, we've uh, got a little agenda slide. So we're going to run through a quick couple of slides of who are CloudBridge, just to give you a bit of background on us as a business. Then we're going to go into actually if we think about cloud commercials, then we really need to think about cloud governance. And from there, we're going to talk about what does visibility mean and, and ultimately how do we take back control? I've got some uh, scenario slides, some examples uh, of reports and dashboards that we give to customers so you get a feel for how we really bring this to life. So let's kick off. So who are we as CloudBridge? So we were incorporated in 2018 uh, with a specific remit to really help take customers on that AWS cloud journey, but more importantly, uh, helping them by taking away a lot of the operational uh, challenges, uh, unknowns uh, and heavy lifting when migrating into AWS uh, and most importantly, you know, optimizing what you do post migration. So we're a team of 85 people dedicated to Amazon Web Services. We don't work with any other cloud providers. We do work with complementary technology partners to help with things like cloud governance, cost optimization, FinOps uh, and security. We're an authorized migration partner. So we've gone through the various stages got the competencies, the certifications, and we're now one of Amazon's leading migration partners in the UK and Europe. We have a very experienced cloud governance and FinOps practice. Indeed, out of the 85 people that, that work within CloudBridge, uh, well over a third of them are dedicated to, to those business units. Uh, we put a lot of effort uh, and time and resource into ensuring that we have good structure, uh, good knowledge, uh, and can take all of those unknowns uh, away from the customers we work with. Uh, in addition to our infrastructure and platform business, we also have an in-house development team um, so that we can help customers you know, take the conversation further uh, and take more of that pain of developing applications and workloads. We do have a DevOps practice as well, uh, which is really where we're seeing a, a lot of the initiatives that customers are driving around the modernization of workloads and and that really helps you know to drive the next layer of cost out of running uh, your applications and workloads uh, and then finally you know we're we're happy and, and, and very excited that we are a a partner uh, who has approved to uh, resell enterprise support for amazon so if you have key workload requirements, you need that 24-7 uh, support, you know, but also you, know, you need things like a, a dedicated technical account manager, then we're able to offer that. Uh, and there's significant commercial advantages that you can gain by working with a partner like CloudBridge uh, for those services you know, versus working with Amazon directly. Uh, and then lastly, you know, everything that we do is backed up by our 24-7 managed infrastructure, platform and security services, uh, and we are ISO 27001 uh, approved. So in terms of locations, uh, we are headquartered in the UK, in Marlow in Buckinghamshire, but we also have regional presence in London, Manchester and Edinburgh. Uh, and then globally, you know, we are now uh, based out of the UAE. Uh, we have offices in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, uh, Finland in Helsinki, uh, South Africa in Johannesburg and the Philippines uh, in Manila, where we have uh, a large section of our of our support um, teams. So let's go into what's important. So when we think about cloud governance and when we think about taking control of costs, you know, one of the first things that I ask you know, uh, customers is really what do we want to achieve? And these conversations normally follow uh, a fairly standard uh, line of responses, which is we want to look at cloud governance. 
well, actually, we probably want to just look at FinOps. Well, actually, you know, cost is really what's important. Uh, and I think that's an important place to start because uh, every organization has a different requirement. Certainly, you know, in the current economic climate, cost is the standout candidate when people think about governance, you know, FinOps. But actually, there's a whole host of uh, you know, challenges that we need to address, you know, if cost is the ultimate outcome that we're looking to drive. So what do we see cloud governance being? Well, yeah, it is cost optimization, uh, but that takes the form of really getting a control over your technical platform and optimizing you know, your, how you build and how you manage your architecture ongoing. It does bring in elements of security in making sure you have good control, good policies in place and a, a fundamental framework and the right guardrails. It incorporates all elements of the well-architected framework. So the six pillars of best practice that Amazon see, you know, that is a, a fundamental uh, element that underlines everything that we do. I think a lot of uh, organizations underestimate the role of people within cloud governance. Uh, and what I mean by that is you know, actually, you know, should certain processes be managed by individuals? Should they be manual tasks? You know, can we look at uh, automating and, and building in the, those structures so that these things happen? Or indeed, you know, is it the right thing for your team to do? Should someone else be taking on the, the hard work, the heavy lifting and, and delivering more of an outcome to you? Process and policy are, are key elements of cloud governance. Um, this is not one time activities. These are ongoing uh, engagements you know, where you need to be looking at it, you know, at the very least monthly, you know, um, in some cases, you know, uh, more often than that. And then finally, you know, if we think about what's the long term of cloud governance, well, we start to think about how can we help our customers to, to build out cloud centers of excellence. So getting all elements of your organization bought in to one standard way of working within cloud, not just AWS, you know, that could be a multi-cloud strategy. But these are all the things that we take into account when we're approaching cloud governance and, and most importantly, you know, that top point of how do we help organizations save cost? So if we think of the iceberg analogy and, and what we see above the line is that we want to save cost, well, actually, you know, what's the bigger challenge underneath and and how do we deal with that problem that we can't see um, and that's not easily visible? Uh, and what is the what are the right steps to, to be going in and tackling that? So what I've done is I thought I would start by sharing some uh, statistics. So this is a report that Amazon uh, had conducted with 451 Research. Uh, in relation to overall cloud spend. And what this shows is that over 80% of organizations exceed their cloud spend budgets. Um, and worryingly, over 50% of the 80% exceed that budget by more than 25%. Um, those are big, big numbers. Um, and clearly, as your uh, cloud um, spend grows, those extrapolate over time. But what's interesting as part of this research is that actually, in some cases, utilization of, of the underlying services, infrastructure, compute instances can be as low as 20 to 30 percent of available capacity. So you know, that really shows that you know, we've got a, a big job to do, you know, really understanding how we get the control, how we ensure that things like right sizing are managed. And we'll come on to that as we go through this, uh, go through this slide deck. But the things that we see and that, that this report has shown is that the those challenges of overspend, over provisioning ultimately cause a slowdown or indeed a, a dead stop, a halt in cloud adoption. So 53% of organizations said that the concerns around spend you know, would limit what they do in cloud and, and what additional services they look at, at building out and migrating into cloud. 25% talk about the fact that it will cripple innovation. Um, those unknowns, the question marks, 
uh, and the fact that you know answers aren't readily available or aren't available at all you know really challenges that ability for organizations to, to innovate what they're doing how they deliver services and what good looks like 38 percent talk about how it, you know, it challenges the, the quality of service that they're delivering, not just into their organization, but to customers. Um, and lastly, 40% you know, have concerns and show that they, they see you know, a significant sprawl, uh, but also an underutilization of resources. So you know, when you bring that all together, you know, it just shows how key it is to, to get good control, good governance over spend, technical infrastructure, technical architecture, security. Uh, and you know, a big part of this again is is you know not just automation of how do we bring automation, but you know, how can we as a partner take away a lot of this pain and, and deliver more of an outcome and output to you um, so that your teams are released to actually go and drive innovation, drive the positive things that cloud can bring, help you monetize new services um to your internal teams but also to customers so um if we think about if we think about the challenge what we've really done is tried to highlight uh the most common areas that, that we support customers on you know, in the short term so at the very top um what you're going to hear for the next few slides is all around visibility yeah in our opinion um our belief is that in order to get good governance, in order to tackle cost, you've got to have strong visibility uh, of your cloud platform. So as it says there, without proper monitoring and traffic tracking, it can be difficult to identify and understand where the costs are coming from. So you know, what we will talk about through the next few slides is, is how we help you get visibility you know, at uh, an account level, service level, yeah, but also how we aggregate those results uh, across multiple accounts and indeed, you know, how you can use some of our tools, you know, to to aggregate those views across multi cloud. Purchasing. Um, so, you know, a lot of people think when we talk about purchasing that we are just simply talking about on demand versus reserved instances, but there are a lot of other ways that, that we can tackle purchasing. Uh, and again, we'll come on to that in the next few slides. We've already talked about utilization uh, and unused resources. Yeah, this is one of the most common gotchas uh, when we review customers' environments. Uh, and indeed, you know, there's some real good quick wins that we can drive when we talk about you know, more effectively right-sizing uh, the resources that you have deployed. Uh, resource control. So you know, it's one thing actually you know, ensuring that you've got good control around the right-sizing and, and flexing up and down uh, that those compute instances, the infrastructure that you set your applications on, but actually, you know, having good control over them is equally important, and not wasting time uh, and money, you know, in unnecessary uh, processes. And then finally, you know, we're seeing an increasing requirement from customers to help effectively manage their data platform. So, you know, not just putting everything into EBS volumes or S3 but actually structuring uh, your data sets, looking at areas and opportunities to archive uh, your data and take advantage of those more cost effective uh, storage platforms that, that Amazon has to offer. So visibility. Uh, visibility, as I've said, is, is for me, is at the heart uh, of everything that, that we want to do in the short term. Uh, visibility in terms of you know, just pulling out the right information, being able to surface that in such a way that you can make meaningful change, you know, drive the right actions. So what does you know, visibility look like? Well, at the basic level, it's deciphering things like your itemized cost usage report from Amazon. So this is your itemized monthly bill that, that you will get. Um, for those of you that have taken the time to sit down and try and work through a cost usage report, um, it is very, very, very tough, not just to actually understand the detail that's sat within that report, but actually bring that to life. You know, those are static reports, you know, but what we try to do is to, to pull that data into our platforms and really start looking at real-time data as opposed to data that is 
two weeks out you know from the previous month's bill once we've got that real-time data it's then a case of well what do we do with that so you know we want to create heat maps we want to give you dashboards you know we want to get reporting set up we want to get alerts but this is where we start thinking about well who is it that we are speaking to within the organization what actually do they need out of uh, our platforms and then we start thinking about okay what does that customization look like um and this is processes that that you know are not long drawn out processes these take you know a matter of weeks um and so we can really get you to the heart of what's important to you very very quickly so we think about visibility uh, and i like this this uh, image because i think what it shows us here is that over time uh, these are uh, the areas that we're going to tackle um, and these are the areas that we're going to you know, show that we can drive change, um, but most importantly, validate that uh, that change to the business. So at the beginning, you know, it's really about the commercial wins. How can we drive those quick commercial wins to drive discounts you know, on top of uh, on top of existing uh, discounts that you might already have. But how can we show back to to you and your organisation that by engaging with a partner, we can tackle this problem quickly. We can give you that visibility. We can help you get control and start giving you the confidence that you're doing things in the right way uh, and that you have a, a plan. From there, once we've looked at the commercial wins, then it's really about technically what could change look like? What does that mean in reality, both in terms of operationally, but commercially? Uh, and how does that you know, lend itself to, to really then, you know, at the top of the peak there, helping to drive strategy, helping to drive long-term change, long-term improvement. But again, with this underlying notion that, you know, is it the right thing that, that you and your teams do this or actually, you know, can a partner, you know, facilitate a lot of this? Uh, and we'll talk about some of the commercial reasons why, you know, working with a partner is a is a is a good thing to do, uh, and can save you and your teams a lot of time. But you know, if we think about the difference between you know commercial wins and strategy, uh, I've got some stats uh, coming up, which will give you an idea as to some of the percentages that customers see as savings when they start adopting uh, this longer term methodology. So here we go. This uh, again from the 451 research that Amazon had conducted, you know, this is what uh, an aggregate group of customers saw as, as, you know, as rough savings, you know, when they adopted, you know, certain elements of best practice. So just by, you know, looking at uh, and monitoring your cloud costs and usage consistently and systematically, you know, customers are able to see that on average, they are able to to monetize a 22% saving you know, in terms of their their existing bill. That takes the form of, of many different outcomes, and and we'll come on to some of the the key areas that customers you know focus on 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 the short term. But if we go down this chart, then you know when we're looking at things like SLA performance, you know monitoring actually how you're using cloud. You know, what are the, the teams, the application owners, you know, getting out of that? How is cloud working for them? The, you know, we can see an additional, you know, 5% saving above the, the just the standard monitoring uh, and managing. But I think what's most interesting is, is when we're able to start thinking about things like recharge and, and delegating ownership of uh, not just the application, but the underlying infrastructure and platform, you know, back to the business units um, and the application teams, then in some cases, customers are seeing up to 52% saving. And that's, you know, a, a mixture of, of reasons that, you know, most of the time that, that takes the form of customers actually removing services because they are no longer needed, but because they're feeling that pain of paying the bill. It could be that it forces them and encourages them to, to look at areas of re-architecture, you know, re-platforming of those services, uh, or adopting you know, newer services from Amazon you know, in the form of uh, maybe serverless, you know, maybe microservices, can be containerized workloads 
or some of the you know, more AWS native services around artificial intelligence or machine learning. Um, but again, we will maybe touch on a little bit of that later on. So this is typically where you know customers and we as a as an organization tend to focus some of those initial conversations. So what we're saying here is that um, an adoption rate of 76 percent of customers will look at tackling things like right sizing of cloud resources. So whether that is, you know, um, literally, you know, a re uh, um, changing your virtual machines, you know, so that you are, you know, looking at uh, maximizing the utilization rates, uh, or it could simply be that you're looking at tackling how you scale uh, workloads and put in auto scaling groups. Pricing uh, models, so looking at those purchasing options, so potentially moving from on demand to reservations uh, and savings plans, uh, but also looking at things like private pricing agreements from Amazon. And again, we can talk about that in, in a short while. Um, the use of uh, cloud providers excess capacity. So for Amazon, this is uh, their spot platform. So that kind of secondary uh, compute market. And there's some you know, big savings that can be made uh, by looking at utilizing uh, those uh, spot instances you know, to drive and manage your workloads and applications. And then finally, I, I put serverless and modernization kind of into the same bucket. You know, what we're looking at doing there is from a partner perspective, really come in and challenge how you deliver those workloads and applications and, and actually saying, you know, can we deconstruct some of those legacy monolithic apps, make it, you know, make them serverless, make them microservices, or indeed, you know, just modernize, you know, some of the ways that you're working today. So, you know, if you're a Microsoft house, you know, taking you from self-managing SQL to some of Amazon's managed database services and, and looking at the economies of scale that that drives. Customers always ask, how long is this going to take? Um, and that, that is a key question. You know, we all need to show back to our relevant organizations and, and management reporting lines that, that we are tackling this. We're being aggressive as possible, but in a measured approach. Uh, and every customer is different. Every organization is different in terms of the structure of their team, what's important to them, the resource they have available to focus in on this. Um, and actually, you know, some of the challenges that they may face in, in doing some or all of this. But typically, you know, what we see is that from a commercial perspective, once we've got that visibility, that within 30 to 60 days, we're able to bring to life some of those commercial savings uh, and start reporting on those and actually showing back to the business uh, that these initiatives are driving change and are saving cost. From a technical perspective, you know, we put down here three to nine months, you know, but that is really quite a, a broad um, window. Um, and again, this comes back down to you know, what drivers do we have within your organization to support technical change? How open are the teams you know, to reviewing the ways that they work and, and how open are they to looking at uh, additional platforms? And when we talk about technical change, you know, there is a number of programs that Amazon have to help support these initiatives. You know, so we don't expect you know, that customers are doing this by themselves. We are absolutely you know, front and center in helping you to, to not only understand what could change look like, but what would that drive, you know, quantifying that um, and, and supporting you at all stages. But really within 12 months, uh, we want to have you know, that longer, longer term strategy really defined and not just defined, but in place and running and running ongoing. Um, and again, this goes back to you know what I've said throughout this this deck so far. You know, is the strategy of the business is the right thing for you to manage this yourselves, or actually, you know, should you be working with a partner who can deliver a lot or all of this? And in some cases, you know, there are no costs for doing this, and I will talk through that in a short while. So, how do we take control? So let's look at the, the quick wins. 
for us, everything starts top center. You know, once we've got that visibility, once we understand the services that are being consumed, once we understand what's important to you, really, we want to be driving an effective tagging policy. And this will you know, follow suit with things like organizational structures, you know, the best practices of how you've built out your account, you know, what guardrails you've got in place, and potentially things like landing zones, AWS control tower. But tagging for us, you know, without tagging, you know, the, the rest of the initiatives become increasingly difficult. But for organizations, you know, tagging has so many benefits. Um, you know, and those come back down to things like you know, recharging, chargeback, you know, ownership, accountability you know, within the team. But at a basic level, just being able to very quickly identify uh, and tackle you know, the, the, the rogue behavior or you know, um, bad behavior with, uh, with, with certain applications, workloads that have been built. From there, then it's really how can we tackle those quick commercial wins? So we're going to look at things like reservations, savings plans, uh, and that can be very much a manual consultative engagement. So we can help identify, surface, and then apply those plans. <clears throat> or we can look at an automated approach you know, to that, that, that opportunity. So we have tools uh, in place that we can deploy that will go and identify and apply reservations and savings plans on your behalf um, without you having any involvement, um, but also you know, removing some of the commercial risk when taking out reservations and savings plans. So we have uh, a platform and I've got a couple of slides further on in the deck that will show you some of the, the reports that we can work with you on. But the, our tools will, will go and do all of that application but the one big commercial benefit is that if things change within your environment, if you remove EC2 instances, if you shut down workloads, then you know, we can take those reservations back, we can put them into the global marketplace, uh, and we can resell those on your behalf so that you are not you know, sat with a, a, a commercial uh, investment that is not giving you any benefit. From there, we want to look at potentially candidates for things uh, for spot instances. So looking at how can we drive anywhere from 50 to 80 percent of the cost of EC2 out of your environment by putting those workloads on spot instances. Challenges in the past of customers adopting things like spot were challenges around the service level agreement. But again, we've got platforms that, that we can work with you on to give you the same uh, uptime SLA as you get with on-demand EC2 instances, but driving those you know, significantly deeper levels of discount uh, and again, not putting you at commercial risk by doing so. And then the same with Kubernetes uh, or your containerized platforms. You know, there are ways of taking you know, just normal Kubernetes clusters you know, and actually driving again those same levels of discount you know, on those workloads and platforms based on using the same similar concepts as Spot. But again, you know, we've got teams of people that will work with you and your solution architects, work with you and your you know, uh, procurement teams to understand and quantify what does that look like? And we can do that free of charge before you having to commit to, to any you know, further conversation. From there, we want to start thinking about what are the opportunities for private pricing? So Amazon you know, are able to offer uh, private pricing on a number of uh, different services that they offer. Um, but the, you know, some of the key ones that, that I you know, call out are things like their CloudFront platform, so their content delivery network platform. So if you are working uh, and transferring, egressing lots of data out of your cloud platform, then we can certainly assist you know, with looking at you know, more aggressive commercial uh, offerings that better suit your business and give you, you know, a more structured uh, and standardized pricing model for, for the longer term. Uh, and finally, you know, from a quick win perspective, we want to tackle that zombie infrastructure, zombie services uh, issue. So where we've got infrastructure, where we've got storage, you know, that's no longer uh, being accessed, um, but is costing you money. So what we want to do there is, you know, take snapshots 
uh, of those data sets, archive those, save those, but ultimately remove that infrastructure so that it's not costing you and the business unnecessary spend. From there, it's really about the medium term. So we're going to extend that zombie infrastructure piece. You know, that, that can take a long time as we work through the application teams and the various different application owners. Once we've done that, we want to start thinking about the right sizing. And combined with that, we want to start thinking about where we've got the opportunity to drive elastic workloads. So, you know, auto scaling workloads, um, you know, but also, you know, taking advantage of those spot, uh, potentially spot instance opportunities. From there, storage optimization again is a key one, and that's an ongoing piece of work. You know, and that can take uh, the form of you know, EBS to S3, S3 to potentially even third party technologies uh, like uh, NetApp FSXN, uh, which can drive deeper levels of discount, um, but also give you an element of, of automation and management. So you are hands off. New AWS services. So this could be brand new services that the AWS are launching. And indeed, in, in things like media industries and finance, there are tons of new services coming out. You know, it seems like all the time, you know, that can give you uh, more performance you know, uh, and less cost for running the same type of workloads. But at a basic level, it could just simply be new EC2 virtual machines that are more performant, less expensive. Let's take advantage of those and let's realize those, those cost savings and those improvements. Amazon, Amazon have got their range of Graviton CPUs, which can drive you know, more uh, performance you know, for less cost. So where possible, let's you know, work with the teams to understand you know, with those workloads that could be candidates you know, uh, to adopt those Graviton CPUs. And finally, but probably one of the, the, you know, the big tasks is actually what can we do around re-architecting and modernizing your environment? And again, when we think about uh, that engagement there, Amazon again have some really interesting programs to, to help support those initial stages of discovery, planning for modernization, you know, driving uh, proof of concepts for those modernized workloads. Uh, and again, those come with the commercial benefit that, you know, in most cases there is uh, little to no cost for customers to adopt those services. But the outcome is that you know you get a really strong plan for what re-architecture and modernization could look like for your business. So long term, what are we then looking to drive? Well, it is organizational structure. You know, it is having that constant tagging review, ensuring that you know, whilst we've got tags, they do follow a structured uh, set of tagging policies. <clears throat> People aren't going outside of that. And if they are highlighting that. Uh, and driving uh, the right effort to remediate. Cost transparency you know, across account, across service, across the business, across the applications, you know, linking that back to tagging, you know, then helping to drive budgeting. Um, so you know, cost centers, you know, that will then lead us onto things like charge back and recharge. If you think about that slide earlier on, you know, where it talked about customers potentially seeing up to 52% saving, you know, that's a key initiative that we want to be driving. We want to be driving accountability within the business. You know, in, in years gone by when we're working on premise, absolutely, there was that accountability. You know, every application owner would know, you know, roughly what their roadmap for their application was, what the costs were, um, and actually how they were managing to, to get more for their investment. So we see that charge back or recharge. Uh, but at least linking that to budgets and cost transparency being a, a key initiative that we want to drive consistently over the long term. Uh, and then there are other things that maybe we can't quantify, but are equally as important. So process improvement, implementing the right policies, getting you know, that handle on security, whether that's you know, peripheral account security or whether that is you know, deep workload security. You know, we want to be driving all of those initiatives consistently. Uh, and then automation first, where appropriate, where possible. So removing the human element, ensuring you know, that we get that consistency you know, uh, of output, the, the right cadence in terms of reporting. And, and all of that ultimately just lead, leads to a very, very strong defined strategy that can be communicated across the business. 
um, and can help drive into the longer term strategy of cloud center of excellence, where you've got ownership, understanding across the business, not just IT, but finance, potentially sales, commercial teams, operational teams um, from ground, to, to, from top to bottom effectively. So what is, you know, what do we see as the solution? So we, over the last six years have built out you know, a strong and comprehensive range of, of cloud governance and FinOps services. We've got a table here, kind of giving a bit of a high level view of some of the things that we can do. But it goes back to this concept of, we want you to help, we want to help you get visibility get control, get the confidence that you know what you're doing, that you know what the plan is, and ultimately save cost. Uh, I talked about it earlier, but I think the biggest reason to work with the partner is, in addition to us having the tools, the people, the processes, um, and the experience, you know, these services are, are free to adopt and use when you work with a partner like CloudBridge. So there is no cost to your business to adopt these services. And indeed, if adopted and implemented in the right way, what you will ultimately see is a net saving you know, on your cloud spend. So free to adopt, and we want to be saving you money within 30 to 60 days. So it sits in that category of you know, what's the risk? And we've got some you know, engagements that I'll talk about at the end of the deck where you know, we can give you these uh, indications of what you could save, what that would look like, and uh, and actually we can do that without you having to, to commit in the short term. So almost uh, uh, approve it you know, before we ask for, for any sort of partnership. But these solutions are scalable and flexible. They do help ensure security and compliance. We've got a whole range of security assessments um, and conversations we can talk you through. Again, automate where possible. You know, automation can take many different forms, but you know, I think automation is, is a key initiative uh, moving forward. And indeed, with some of the things that our development team is working with Amazon on, you know, we're constantly looking at how can we build high degrees of automation across that whole cloud governance uh, you know, engagement. And these are for organizations of all sizes. You know, I, I often get asked, how much you know, do we need to be spending before this is right for us? If you are spending $1,000 a month and we can save you 20%, you know, $200 is, is not to be sniffed at. It's $2,500 a year. You know, it, it's, you know, it's as important as an organization that's spending $100,000 you know, and, and can save you know, to the same you know, levels. So it is for all sizes, you know, for all sectors, uh, for all verticals. But what I would argue is that you know, as your, your spend increases, obviously that saving you know, you know, really compounds. Um, so you know, the more you are spending, you know, the greater the return you know, for your organization. So I just want to run through some quick report examples to give you a flavor as to what can you see you know, and, and how can we then start drilling into that information. So this just gives you a, a bit of a, a view you know, with one of our customers you know, over the last 12 months, what their spend profile has looked like. And, and since they've been on board with CloudBridge, actually what we've been able to do in terms of consistently saving their money. So we worked with this customer uh, in you know, just pre-summer in 2022. We onboarded them uh, in the June time. You know, we help them build out this accurate you know, um, uh, previous uh, um, billing information to see where they'd grown from, you know, from a, a kind of a six month previous perspective. Uh, and then subsequent to us onboarding them in, in June, July time, you know, we've been, been aggressively looking to see how we can reduce that spend profile. So, you know, you can see here from July in 2022 to today, you know, we've effectively halved uh, their AWS invoices, you know, but actually not by reducing the services they consume. So this customer is still, you know, consuming ultimately and managing the same platform workloads, you know, but their bill has reduced, you know, by half. Um, and there's a number of different ways that we've done that. But what you can see across the top is all the different services on our platform. These are all linked, so you can click into any of these. Uh, boxes and that will take you through to that service and then you can start seeing actually what are those services that are being utilized and start driving into the information a lot deeper then we can talk to you about well, what does spend look like through accounts 
you know, what are the accounts spending over a period of time? We can customize all these dashboards. We can look at the same information, but but mapping it by service and showing you, you know, where spend is increasing, where it's dropping you know, by service. And then we can adapt. Uh, and you know, if you don't want the, the pretty bar charts, we can put them into you know, more static files like this and show you where that utilization increase or, or reduction is coming from. I think this is, this is probably very powerful for a lot of businesses is actually understanding you know, what does right sizing look like and, and post right sizing, you know, what could you know, what benefits could we get from looking at bringing in things like auto scaling or just elastic workloads. So again, you know, all of this is, you know, we're able to click through um, to go into those individual um, virtual machines uh, and start really challenging to see, well, you know, what does that utilization look like? You know, we've got a 30 day average here on this service of 1.5% peaking at 12.73%. So there's a huge opportunity to save there. And, and we'll give you those highlights and top level numbers as to what that looks like and, and how do we plan to go after that in the short term. Then we think about things like automation. So what we're talking about here is how can we automate those savings for you and then report on that. Yeah, and I think the key thing to talk about here is we're completely flexible in, in how you need that output, what you need that output to look like. So if it's simple spreadsheets, fine. If it's you know pretty graphs and dashboards, equally we can customise all of that for your specific requirement. Then we can show you how you know savings are increasing over a period of time. You know what that would look like as a forward-looking view for say a 12-month period. You know, um, what we we're talking about here with this customer you know, is we were going quite aggressive, you know, with 80% coverage for reservations and savings plans, but actually ramping that up to 90%. Um, but again, you know, by automating these uh, these savings, then what we're doing is we're removing in the commercial risk for the customer um, so that they don't have that uh, sunk cost if they remove uh, virtual instances. OK, so we're kind of nearly at the end. Um, I'd just like to talk you through what do we see as the next steps? So following this session today, I'd encourage all of you to, to set up a 30 minute cloud governance workshop with CloudBridge. Um, what we will talk you through is understanding what are your pain points? What are you looking to achieve? And then we'll talk you through how we can deploy our tools, which is zero impact. All they access is read only data of that cost usage report. But once those tools are deployed and in place and we've ingested that read only data after a you know, four week period, typically we're going to come back to you with a, a full plan and, and, and a PowerPoint deck as to what does an optimization plan look like for you? So what are those immediate quick win cost savings? What does technical architectural change and optimization look like? Where are potential security and governance risks and how can we improve upon those? And again, how can we look at automating uh, where appropriate? From there, it's very simple. We want to implement that plan and start saving money. And as I said before, that's at no additional cost to your organization. So everything I've talked about by working with CloudBridge, you have access to those services, those tools, those technologies, those people free of charge. There is no cost for your business. Finally, I've got some questions that we typically see um, that customers want help and support on. Um, so how does your cloud governance solution compare to the services that we could consume from Amazon directly and what sets your solutions apart? I think that's a key one. Amazon are, are fantastic at providing the tools uh, within you know, the AWS consoles and platform to extract a lot of this information. But really, you know, the, the challenges that we see customers uh, facing is that you've got to manage uh, those tools. You've got to be able to customize those. And actually, you know, um, there are multiple tools to, to get the information you need. So it can take time to set up. It can take time to manage. And it goes back to this, this question of actually, should you be doing that? So what sets us apart is we deliver this as an outcome to you. So we have you know, one or two tools that will pull all of this information together. 
we will you know, manage uh, the process of the reporting, the customization of the tool, the alerting, the different reports for different individuals of your business. So we're delivering it as an outcome and we're taking all of that operational pain away from you. Um, how will you ensure that your organization maintains compliance and security while in optimizing costs? You know, this is a, a real important you know, question from uh, organizations. So you know, we can, uh, as I said uh, uh, halfway through the slide deck, we can look at peripheral account security and what does best practice look like, but we have additional tools that can drive into actually what's going on within your accounts, what's going on within your workloads. So through a combination of, of tools uh, and people, uh, you know, we will at all stages you know, ensure that we're not going to do anything without permission. We're highlighting you know, where we think there are concerns uh, and most importantly, you know, what do we advise that you do to tackle them? How flexible are our solutions? I think the answer there is very flexible. We can do full customization of, of the platforms, the dashboards, the reports, the alerts. Uh, we can do that by team, by individual, um, and we can you know, adapt the cadence that we deliver that to you on. Uh, roadmap, I've talked about that as the long term, you know, actually what, what do we want to do for you for the long term? So we work with all of our customers to understand the short, the medium and the long term goals, and then we build a plan to help you manage that. Uh, I'll quickly uh, run through the, the last few questions, but I think you know, the, uh, the scale and growth you know, is, is a, a nice, easy one for us because whether you are spending a few thousand dollars or a few hundred thousand dollars, fundamentally the approach um, is the same, you know, um, the people approach, uh, the automation approach, the reporting approach. How do you measure success? Well, that comes in the form of reporting. So if IT you know, uh, want specific reports around actually the, the technical optimization that we're driving, we can build that in. If finance just want to see what does my cost reductions look like over a period of time and what does that look like moving forward, again, we can support that with the reports that we can produce. How do your cloud governance solutions address the emerging technologies? I think this comes into that conversation around modernization you know, and us wanting to come back and challenge how you're delivering technology. So by being able to extract the information of how you're working today, that really helps us to, to come back and position alternative ways of working in the future and then building out you know, cost models um, to show what that would mean uh, to your business. And then finally, how do you know, we address the unique challenges and considerations of different industries and verticals? So we've got really good experience working into the financial services, insurance, media and telco markets. Uh, and we understand you know, that, that every one of those uh, organisations and industries has a different set of challenges. So again, it comes back down to how flexible are we? You know, we encourage all of our customers to be very clear about what they want. Um, but you know, by no means you know, do, do those requirements then, you know, they're not set in stone. So if things change, if, if the requirements change, you know, indeed, on an ad hoc basis, if people need certain you know, elements of information, then we can work with our, our FinOps and cloud governance team to, to get that information and share that with you. So that is everything for today. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, if you do want to get in contact and understand what cloud governance, what cost saving, what technical improvement can look like for you, uh, then please get in touch through your AWS account manager or directly with CloudBridge.